This is a Marshall Enterprises presentation. Same location, same background, similar message. Hello, everybody. I'm from Brownsville. I thank you for taking time out to listen to what the hell is coming out my mouth. My last video I talked about good for nothing doctor. And no, uh, let me let me not let me not go hard on the man because the man is making a buku amount of dollars doing nothing. And I make some money doing nothing as well, but you know, I, I ain't gonna be mad. I ain't gonna be mad. Be mad with yourself because it's your body. It's your body. What are you doing to your body? Are you eating yourself to death? It's your body. You are responsible for what you put in it, what you do to it. And if you don't know, you're still responsible because you should know. But if you don't know, what you don't know can hurt you, can also kill you. What are you doing to your body? So, I have a distrust. I have a distrust that I've grown up with, that grew with me, that formulated over years. And I guess growing up in the neighborhood that I grew up in, you 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 you're you're born with the trait of being able to detect bullshit. You know, something just won't fly with you when you're well, it doesn't matter what neighborhood you born you're born in, not really. Some people got it, some people don't. There's people that are born in my neighborhood that are still foolish, whatever, but not it's not about that. What I'm saying is, you know, bullshit doesn't fly. And I'm able to discern some things. So I have a distrust. And my distrust is when you read food labels, it says all natural. Then you read the ingredients and it has a bunch of shit up there that they never taught us in school. all is what is that word? What is that? What does it grow? It's all natural. We should know what it is, right? No, all naturally made in a lab somewhere. What the health professionals is telling us today is we need to get more wheat, more fiber in our diets. You know, whole wheat is better. Okay, but did they tell us that this whole wheat we eating today is hybrid? It's not really wheat. The wheat that we're eating today is not the wheat that we've eaten back in the 70s, early 80s. They've hybridized our wheat. And it's a franken food. It is doing much more damage to us than we even know. But you don't know. If you recall, and depending on the age that you are, you see certain packages of food or you remember packages of food, and that thing used to be so big, but now it's so small. It's like you're, 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 back in the days, my juice bottle was like this, and it was 25 cents. Now today, a juice bottle's like this, and I'm paying a dollar. It's a switcheroo. Not only that, it's not real. Oh, you can't say that no more. You, there was a lawsuit for craft, it was saying real cheese, and that shit was not real. <laughs> That's like fresh. All these words don't mean shit anymore. I have a strong distrust. So it goes deeper. You'll get, or you'll go into a pharmacy and you'll get supplements because the food that we're eating today does not have the nutrients that it's supposed to have, which I'll explain in a second. So you'll go in and you'll get pills of 
whatever tin, something tin, whatever it is. Let's let me go here. It's so much about brain. I'm trying to get out. It's funny though. I've known drug dealers that took baking soda and soap, mix it up, put it in vials, and sold it to people. Of course, when the crackhead smoked that thing, it wasn't what he was intending, and you know he was a little upset. But the the dealer got paid. He he got his five ten dollars. I mean. That's some sucker shit. It is some sucker shit. But the pharmaceutical industry does the same thing to you. But because it's a brand name, it's, oh, you don't know any difference. It's mind over matter. They tell you to take this, and you go take that pill, and oh, oh actually, I'm feeling better. It ain't shit in there. But because they put in a capsule, and they call it this, there's some people that are taking black seed oil right now. If you look at the, the amount of black seed or the, the active ingredient of black seed oil, it probably has less than 2% in that bottle, and the rest is oil. But you all of a sudden, oh, I feel better. My appetite is better. It's mind over matter. You don't mind? It don't matter. And guess what? If you don't know that there's nothing in there, it don't matter. Because you paid $27. It got to be something in there. It got to be potent. No. If you recall, 100% fresh. All natural. They can advertise that shit. If I'm not mistaken, I'm going to try to do a research on who owns the patent or who owns the word natural, who owns the word fresh. Because at one time, we were calling copies of paper Xerox. Oh, I want, can you make me a Xerox? No, 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 no. That's a brand name of a company. That's not the name of what you're doing. You're making a photocopy. You're making a copy, not a Xerox. Xerox patented that shit and said, you can't, you can't call that that. So fresh, natural, all natural. Can't use those words. In advertising, can't, no, this is all natural. Now it's organic. Organic. Organic, and we sopping that shit up. What is organic? Now, back in the days, and I don't even think I can adequately talk about back in the days because production of commercialized foods have been ramped up, I guess, right before I was born, meaning from sugar plants, wheat plants to herbs and different things. If you have, let me use this for an example. My plant is doing so poorly. I'm so sorry. If this was wheatgrass, we're growing wheatgrass. This is not wheatgrass. I'm just hypothetical. Once the wheatgrass is formed and it takes all the nutrients out of that soil and you take that plant away and you use it, if you do not compost or add more nutrients into the soil, the next plant that you put in there is going to be nutrient deprived, nutrient deficient, because the plant before it took all the nutrients out of that soil. So if you think of overpopulation, not overpopulation, but over manufacturing, you got farms that produce food constantly lettuce, tomatoes, onions, corn, are they composting and re -nutri reintroducing nutrients into those soils? Chances are they're not. They don't have the time. They have to mass produce your food, our food. And if they're mass producing our food, chances are it's going to be nutrient deficient, nutrient deprived. Thus why people are taking supplements because the food that they're getting and not getting the energy from because there's no energy in it. There's no nutrients in it. Then you go and you get a supplement from whoever company and you got baking soda and soap that you're taking. You know, you think it's vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin B, vitamin B19. You think it's all that crap. It's not. So, 
I've learned and grown to have a distrust in a lot of things. And I'm looking forward to growing my own food. I will be composting my soil. So anything that I plant in that soil, I'm gonna know there's nutrients in it because I made sure. I'm in the process of making my own medicines. Because who knows what people do or have done with the medicines that you are buying now? Is it legit? Is it real? Is it pure? When you do it yourself, you know the chemical makeup, you know what is in there, you know what it can do. So you should be doing the same. And the pause between this video or the last video and the one before that is because I realized, wait a minute, we are in a pandemic right now, a pandemic right now. And if y'all recall, I know you recall of the tissue shortage. And there's, there's, there was different, you couldn't find disinfectant. You couldn't find certain things. So when shit hits the fan, because it really didn't hit the fan, it was tight, but it didn't hit the fan. When shit hits the fan and the pharmacy is closed or the supermarket is closed, and you need that aspirin, but you never need aspirin, but suppose you need some medicine, you need some things. You should have your own supply, your own stock. Can you make your own tissue? Yeah, you could. <laughs> yeah, you could. There are things that you can do to supplement those as well. Another conversation, another time. But another plug, I'm not supposed to be talking about it. I'm going to talk about it. Make you fly the answer. This happens to be clove. It's going to become, or it's, it's fermenting now, it's going to be a tincture, a clove tincture. It's for toothaches, it's for pain, it's for several other things. Look up cloves, clove tincture. My company is going to be selling this stuff and it's personally made. So I can guarantee the quality and the contents. These other main big companies, can they do that? So I'll be dealing directly with my people, my little circle, helping them with their illnesses and their ailments. Turmeric, ginger, cayenne. Turmeric, ginger, cayenne, tincture. Wheatgrass, tincture. What is a tincture? Let's just say when you take that bushel, that this is not wheatgrass, but when you take that little bushel of wheatgrass, you're gonna get a daily supply of nutrients. Granted, when you take a drop of this tincture, you're gonna get a week's supply of nutrients. Are you eating yourself to death? Do you know that the body cannot deal with the amount of carbohydrates and sugars that it's taking in? Do you know that the body is forced to try to process it and do something with it? And when it can't, it stores it or it tries to get rid of it. Now, if you think of your lungs, when you breathe in, you take it in fresh air. You breathe out, you're pushing out bad air. When you think about your colon, your colon takes in good nutrients, processes it, and pushes out the waste. So just about every organ in your body has a purpose, is dealing with something good, processing it, and then there's a byproduct of it. If you're not drinking enough water, you're not allowing your body to rid itself of toxins. So how are the toxins coming out? 
chances are the toxins are not coming out. The toxins are staying in your body and wreaking havoc on other parts of your body. So you have to get the toxins out. Drink more water. Does it make sense? I use this in another video, whereas you can change the oil to your car every couple of thousand miles. And if you look at the oil as it's coming out, how gritty and black that is from, you know, protecting that engine and doing what it needs to do. How do you clean your body's main filter? How do you clean the oil in your body, in your car? Because you're, you're a vehicle. You're a vehicle with many, many parts. What are you doing to take care of your vehicle? What maintenance plan are you on? I, I don't mean to put him out there, but I will. My son forgot to change his oil. Blew his engine. <laughs> he blew his engine. So he, he just, you know, you get busy, you forget these things. And we neglect our bodies. We do the same thing. We, oh, I'll do it next week. All right, you put your body in hold. Guess what? Eventually, your body's going to say, that's it. <laughs> you need to take care of your vehicle. Regular maintenance is important. So are you eating yourself to death? Another video I mentioned how my cousin, female cousin, she's always posting on her page, somebody done drop dead. Somebody's dying. She has a lot of friends and they just keep dropping dead. And these people are in their 30s, in their early 40s. So what is happening? What is happening is people are not paying attention to their bodies or they're paying attention after the fact, meaning you done did 40 years, 35 years of damage to your body and now you're going to take a supplement and think it's going to be all right. No, what you need is some herbs. You need some water, some rest. You need a real regimen to remedy the damage you've done all those years. But also you got to stop. You can't keep putting the crap in and trying to fix it. There, okay, let's talk about the darn sea moss. Everybody in their mama is taking sea moss today. You ain't changed your diet. You just added sea moss to the problem. So the sea moss is going to make me better. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. There is more out there than the sea moss. When the next big thing pops up, because you know what? Next month, it might be the castor oil. Oh, my God. Because before, about a year, two years ago, it was black seed. Oh, oh we all got to get black seed. We got to get black seed. Then it was wheatgrass. Now it's sea moss. It's, you can't find sea moss in most of these stores anymore because everybody and mom is getting them some sea moss because they feel, oh, it's going to help me with COVID. It's going to protect me. It's going to boost my immune system. And yeah, it will boost your immune system. Yeah, it will help. Yes. Yes, but if you still have a toxic environment, if you still are putting the poisons in, that sea moss is only feeding the poisons. But are you eating yourself to death? Are you eating yourself to life? This is Bud Brownsville. Got some more for you guys. There are things that you should know, need to know, and you need to look up for yourself. So it's my duty, it's my job to present the information to you, but it's your job to look it up and see, is it right? Is it not right? Is there some substance to this? Should I be using this? Should I be? You need to do your own due diligence. If you call me up and you ask me about an uh, illness or something going on and, you know, what, what could I do? What are some suggestions? I'll be glad to give you some suggestions, but it's still going to be up to you to actually follow through. So what are you doing to you and your body, with your body? If you give your body the material that it needs, it will do what it needs to do. You should not be taking aspirin 
every day because you have a splitting headache every day. It means something's going on and you need to address it, not mask it. Again, I spoke in another video of giving children cough medicine, cough suppressant. When a child has a cough, it's the body's natural reaction to expel the germ, to push it out, to <laughs> get it out, <laughs> get it out. When you give a child cough suppressant, they now can't get that germ out. Yeah, they're relieved, they're relieved, they feel good. They're, oh yeah, no more coughing. But the reason the body is coughing is to get that germ out. So what is another way of getting it out? If you're going to suppress it, you need to give your body something to fight that germ. But oftentimes it's, oh, I'm going to give you something for that cough. And they give children cough medicine for just about everything. They, they slip and fell, give them some cough medicine. They bump their head, give them some cough medicine. We got to stop over medicating our children. Y'all have to stop over medicating your children. I didn't over medicate mine. They're grown now. They're on their own. They got their own issues to deal with. But what are you doing to your body? There's things that your body needs. What are you doing? What are you supplying? What are, what are you giving it? Are you giving it what it needs? And I have some more tips for you guys that may be able to help you. So I uh, thank you for watching. Keep it short and sweet. And I'll see you on the next one.